We have an insulating disk of radius capital R. The disk is rotating about an axis going through its center. The axis is represented with the dashed line in the picture and it's perpendicular to the plane of the disk. The rotational speed of the disk is omega, so omega represents the angular displacement per unit time. The disk has a total charge of plus Q distributed uniformly over its surface and we'd like to find the magnetic field at the center of the disk. One way to approach this problem is to imagine the disk as a combination of concentric rings starting from the center and growing towards the edge of the disk. Each of these rings will create a magnetic field at the center and the total magnetic field of the disk will be the sum of the magnetic field of each individual ring. So how do we actually sum those? Well, you guessed it right, we're going to imagine a unit ring element, set up the formula for the magnetic field created due to that ring element, and then in, we're going to integrate over the ring elements. And here is such a ring of radius lowercase r, so make sure you see the difference between capital R and lowercase r. Capital R is a constant, that is the radius of the entire disk. Lowercase r is the radius of a given ring, and we have many of these. We have an infinite number of uh, these rings. And uh, the magnetic field of the disk, let's say capital B, is going to be equal to the sum of the magnetic field due to each ring, which I'm going to call dB. So the magnetic field due to a single ring will be dB. So this is an integral, basically. Next, let's remember the formula for the magnetic field due to a single ring at the center of the ring. I'm going to put it right here. So B ring is equal to mu zero I divided by two R. Mu zero capital I. So I is the um, the current in the ring divided by two times R. Here in this uh, formula, capital R is the radius of the ring. So this is a general formula. These variables do not apply to our problem. Now you may be asking, uh, so this is for a loop uh, with current in it, right? Uh, we don't have that in this problem, but we have the ring, the insulating ring with uniform charge on it rotating. So it acts like a, a you know, loop a metal loop with current in it. And that's why we have a magnetic field at the center. Now let's formulate the contribution from each ring element using the general formula that I have at the corner here. So we'll just adapt that formula uh, to our problem. Uh, we have mu zero, so that's just a constant, that's the one stays. For instead of capital I, I'm going to put uh, di, lowercase i. This is indicating that this is the current in a given ring, and each ring will have a different current, will have its own current, divided by 2 times for the radius of the ring, of course, uh, based on the picture again, I'm going to put lowercase r. So the next task will be to come up with an expression for di in terms of the given variable so we can actually take the integral and solve this problem. Here's how I think about it. What is electric current? That's electric charge per unit time, right? So some amount of charge crossing a certain point in some amount of time. So dq divided by dt. Now let's focus on an area element on our ring, like so. This area element will have charge dq on it. It acts like a point charge or some small amount of charge uh, dq. And it's moving, right? It's uh, crossing any point, any given point uh, in a given time interval. 
So let's try to come up with an expression for di using that idea. So di is equal to dq over dt. Now, what is dq? While the charge is uniformly distributed over the surface of the disk, so we can come up with the idea that uh, the charge on any area is equal to the area, surface area, uh, times uh, the surface charge density for that, for that little patch. So in that case, we can express it like so. Instead of dq, I can put sigma times dA, where sigma is the surface charge density for the entire disk, and dA is the area of this unit uh, area element that I highlighted here. So the next task will be to come up with an expression for dA. But before that, uh, I keep introducing new variables, right? What is sigma? Well, again, sigma is the surface charge density. And let's quickly uh, define it by definition. Sigma is equal to total charge uh, of the disk, capital Q, divided by the total surface of the disk, which is pi r squared. Uh, which R am I talking about? I'm talking about the capital R because this is the surface of the entire disk. So this is how we define sigma. Greek letter sigma traditionally used for surface charge density. So I did introduce a new variable, but at the end I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, just keep in mind this is how it's connected to the given variables. So now we have di equals sigma da divided by dt. dA is the area element that is the area of this patch that I highlighted in the picture. There's more than one way to express dA. The simplest way is, for instance, dx dy. But here we have a disk, which is a highly symmetric shape. It has circular symmetry. So let's use polar coordinates to express dA. Let me redraw the area element dA in a magnified version here. So this is like a section of a circle. Here's the center of the disk. This is my area element dA, the shaded area. And this length here is r, the radial variable r, also the radius of the given ring. This opening, this small opening is d theta, an infinitesimal change in the angle theta. And this distance here is dr, an infinitesimal change in the radial coordinate r. So let me actually highlight the sides of this patch. So again, this is dr, right? How about this side here, this curved side of the unit area dA. This is the arc length corresponding to the angle d theta. Let's apply the arc length formula to find the, the length of this curved side. Uh, the arc length formula is basically multiply the angle by the radius, so r d theta is the length of this side. So you can see that the area element is like a some sort of a uh, distorted uh, rectangle, and we can find we can formulate its the area by multiplying r d theta this side by the other side d r. So basically, width times length. So d a equals r d theta r d theta d r. Let's substitute this result back in the expression for di. So we substitute r d theta dr for dA. And what do we get here? Take a look at this. d theta over dt. What is it? By definition, this is omega, the angular speed. How? Well, d theta over dt is really angular displacement per unit time which by definition is equal to angular speed. 
and that's already a, a given variable in our problem that's omega so in the next step let's rewrite this expression with uh, omega substituted for d theta over dt and then we'll go back to our integral here's our integral with di substituted with the expression that we just found now we actually have our actual integration variable in the integrand part what is it it's r so we're going to integrate over dr right at this point we can set the lower and upper bounds of the integral so r runs from 0 to capital r all the way from the center to the edge of the disk so here are my integral bounds from 0 to capital r uh, and let's also notice that there's some simplification. I have uh, lowercase r in the numerator and also in the denominator. Those cancel, which is nice. Before taking the integral, let's also uh, pull out the constants so uh, we can see things more clearly. The good news is this is not a heavy-duty integral. It's fairly simple. The integral of dr is simply r. So... We'll do that in the next step. Also, at the same time, notice that sigma is a variable that I introduced, so I need to get rid of it. So I'll do two things in the next step. I'm going to replace sigma with capital Q divided by pi capital R squared, and then I will also take the integral. Here's what we get. The evaluation of the integral is also fairly simple. Uh, we evaluate r from 0 to capital R, so this is simply equal to capital R minus 0, which is just capital R. We get a factor of capital R in the numerator, and we have r squared in the denominator, so those simplify. And our final answer is mu0 times capital Q omega divided by 2 pi capital R. That is the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of the disk.